Yo, black man. Yeah, how you Yeah, wait a second. Let me turn this fan off, man. It's hot in here. Hold on a second. Got the window all open. You might be hearing some stuff out there. I got a. Yeah, I got. I got the. I got the what do you call the 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 towel on my head, the, the washcloth on my head. Just put some cold water on it. Uh-huh. You know, right. you got the you got you know you got the triple digits here, man. Hey, yeah. man, I feel like I'm feel like I'm in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> In the summertime, man. Oh, matter of fact, you know, usually I usually I'd be drinking the hot tea when I'm when I'm when I'm talking to you. But you know, now I, I made this uh, I made this smooth. Well, I don't know, it's called a smoothie, really, because I mean, I I had I, I got my goat milk yogurt. You know, there's only one place I got it, goat milk yogurt. And so I, I had some. Uh, what did I put in there? Uh, I put I put some black cherries. You know, some you know it's black cherry season. So you know, I just. You know, put it with my my mouth and put the black cherry in there. And then I had some blueberries that was in the freezer, and so I got them and put it together. Then I put my uh, moringa powder and um, my uh, buffered vitamin C. But you know, and I had and I, and I did that yesterday. In fact, it was like yesterday, whatever. And now when I'm 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 pimping it up. Well, I shouldn't say pimp. I should that's that that's a bad word. I'm enhancing it with some uh, black uh, just black cherry juice. You know, and it's they're truly true enough. It's just black cherry. They don't have no not from country all that stuff. Some pouring some pouring that something there. Cause you know, the more you put black in the body, the better it is for you. You know, as a as a black man, you know that. You know. So I gotta do that. Let me put this over here. Now, oh yeah, it's late now, man. I'm calling you late. I'm gonna use my usually I take some apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to take an apple cider vinegar tablet now. Oh, okay. Because, you know, we're in time of the Rona. I got to make sure things are right with me. Yeah. How, how's it going with you, man? Is it right with you? You sent me a good link, man. I listened to that. Like I tell people, man, you got to follow the scientists. Forget these people that say they're doctors and they're really administrators. Forget these politicians. Go to the scientists, the scientists that be in the journals and stuff like that. They know. Well, here's what happened. You said that to me, right? Mm-hmm. And you also said it on your post, too. That's about, you know, check out the scientists. But you sent me something the other day about the, um, the, the sister that was adopted talking about um, fecal and oral matter, like fecal matter with oral, you know. So it's fecal matter and something with, the, with oral, like meaning like if, we, if uh, you touch fecal matter and then you touch your face or your hand or something, also with the animals and stuff like that. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, the whole, uh, no, but the, that, at the very end of the post, she was saying, she's, I don't know if she's theorizing, whatever, but the thing is, you know, I walk a dog all the time. And so, like, yeah. the, I think a couple of mornings ago, I was walking a dog. You know, people come up with their dogs, and the dogs be looking, sniffing each other, and then they go to each other's butt and all this and stuff. And I told the lady, yeah. I said, they said, no, no, don't, don't do that, you know. Then I explained to yeah. her, I, I even gave it to Dr. Tracy, McCarthy, look her up, blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to explain to her that, you know, dogs, you know, if, they, if the pets have it, the pets can have it. And so the pet, and then because, you you know, you know how people just love their dog. I shouldn't say people like it, especially white people, they love their dog, be licking on them. So the dog, if they're getting it from another dog, and then, you know, because they smell, smell each other's butt, and then, you know, then they'd be licking on your face. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, so you don't know how this thing is spread. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's crazy. Yeah, but but you said you well, you said the, the link that I sent you, it was like um I don't know if you want to call it kismet karma or whatever. It's like all of a sudden it might be that um the medicalcram dot com thing came up, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh okay, this is like giving an update on you know COVID, the long haulers and stuff like that. So I said, let me watch this. Then after I watched it, then I shared it with you. Yeah, hey, but that's what we gotta do, you know, people. Like, like I said, the, the time you spend listening to these people, the, my problem is that, I mean, for the last how many months, you know, March, April, May, this is, wait, March, April? No, it's April. When, when, when did this thing start? Did it start? No, no, no. April? May? February, New York knew about it in February. Okay, well. Right? Let, let's and get, then I'm saying by like early March, okay, you March. Know, maybe 
by the first week of March, it was like, okay, this is real. It's happening. Here. Right. Big time. And then from there, it was just spread. And then March, April was like where it was at its peak. Right. Started coming down in May right. and kept declining June and July. This is June. Yeah. June. And now we're at the end, almost at the end of July. That's five months. Now, what have we been here for five months? The same things. Wear a mask, social distancing, wash your hands. Basically, that's what it is. Well, how can you tell if you're assigned, if you're anything, how can you tell me the same thing for five months? You have nothing else to tell me? Yeah. Which means the people have to take, the people, you know, you have to keep on linking up with the people that, let's put, I'll put, put this right, the people you love. You know what I mean? And say, look, that's fine. Yeah. You do all that stuff. But here's some additional information. So so, yeah. so, so when I tell you when you walk your dog or you walk, whatever, you walk your cat or whatever you walk in, and they sniff on other animals and that thing, it's possible they can do that. Hey, at least if it ain't going to hurt you, you know what I mean? Look, just don't do it. If I, if I say to you, like, you know, apple cider vinegar, they ain't tell you about apple cider vinegar, but that's cleansing your body. But also, you know, some chlorophyll is going to cleanse, cleanse your body too. You know what I mean? Then perhaps it ain't going to hurt you. Then go ahead and do it. You know? Yeah. That's the whole thing. And here's the trick. Black man, let me tell you. People understand here. I I actually weirdly have a medical background. You know, I was a lab technician in, in you know in the Air Force. And so what happens is you not figure all this stuff because they thoroughly train you. <laughs> they thoroughly train you. You in the military, they thoroughly train you. And so there's stuff I just totally forgot. Now forgot I don't have to deal with it. You know, hey, that's like it's, that's the mid seventies. We're in mid, whatever we are right now. So I don't know. But then just stuff start hitting you and you start remembering. You say, wait a second, hey, that's right. So it's just simple like the thing you sent me that they was talking about how uh like, like basically well, well basically it's like this. Inflammation is your enemy. So if I know yeah. inflammation is your enemy and I'm telling you, look, man, you got to do some more turmeric. So I'm making my smoothie. I got to put turmeric in my smoothie. Sal, I put turmeric in that. Um, uh, Marengo, mer I just put, that, that brings down any kind of inflammation. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So if yeah. it ain't going to hurt you, it's a seasoning. They, they should do a study on, on say, the, what, what the, the Indians. The Indians put turmeric in their stuff all the time. That's why they're so skinny and whatever have you. But are they getting it the, the way because they're crowded? Uh, you know, I don't know. All these kind of things can be studied, study populations, but data, data, data. Mm. Yeah. But you were saying something else because this was your thing, the sanitation. I mean, you're, 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 you were a cleaner for for the, you know, for the transit system in New York City. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I saw what you talked about with, um, janitorial sanitation workers and stuff like that and also what that sister has said about janitorial workers as well I'm like well that's straight up what I did for like almost 30 years it's like are you kidding me it's like way before and, and I'm glad that you talked about this viruses in general as opposed to this um, COVID-19 mm -hmm. because viruses in general just proliferate down there. Mm. I mean, if you talk about people not washing their hands or not for being unsanitary or, you know, you know, unfortunately with the homeless, a lot of times they don't really have a place to, you know, really cleanse themselves. So a lot of times what they'll do is they would hold up in the public bathroom. But the public bathroom was, was like, it was a sanctuary for them, for those that wanted to clean themselves. And it was a situation where they looked at us as, as the enemy. It was, you know, when you have like a Hatfields and McCoy situation, <laughs> it was like, we were the Hatfields and the McCoys. It was like, oh, they're the cleaners. You know, they're going to, um, they're going to kick us out. They're going to clean it up and then they're going to lock it up. And then we can't go back in there. We can't do our thing. And then you had situations where, you know, they were, you know, you, you sort of learn over time. Where it's like, okay, it's not really a Hatfield and McCoy situation. It's really a one-on-one -on -one human situation. So what you would do is like, you know, sometimes with, with the homeless, they'll be like, look, can I just go in there and blah, 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 take care of my business, blah, 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 blah. And you'd be like, yeah, okay, no problem. And then there were others that would just, you know, and, and it just shows you human nature. You know, you know, you get more um, beans with honey. Yeah. You know, some of them would just be rude, nasty, and... In other cases, you know, they just mentally weren't there. So they just looked at any type of um, 
anything preventing them from doing what they freely wanted to do, they considered authority. So they considered you just as authoritative as a police officer to them. Mm. So it was like, any authority, I have to balk. So it was it was just, you know, uh, it was crazy. Yeah. But getting back to the, the the battle within the battle, which was oh, the virus oh. and Oh, and bacteria and germs themselves. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second before you say that. I just want to say something about my brother. You know, that was so interesting about my brother because one of the things he first said to me was that you know he did, he did the airports because he knew they had to clean the bathrooms all the time and they had to stay open. So my brother was smart. He was smart that okay. way. Yeah. No, no, your brother knew what the deal was, and the thing was is that um, a lot of places that I worked. There were certain bathrooms where you knew, like, okay, um, this bathroom has to be open, this bathroom has to be clean. And then even for you as a worker, it was like, oh, okay, so this is kind of a joy to clean this bathroom because it's constantly being clean. You just go in, handle your business, and then you leave, you know? And you just open it up when um when you when you feel it's like because they also had a, a issue of safety. So they didn't want anybody slipping on the floor. If the floor was really wet or something like that. And then you had situations where, and sorry to say, but like in the hood, the bathrooms in the hood, they were just like, it was like jail. It was literally like jail. Like like that uh that old series, Oz, things like that. All kinds of things happening there. Stuff mm-hmm. that you wouldn't even take the children into the bathroom to use it, even if they had to go. It was just it was just like a lot of misuse of what the bathroom was supposed to be used for. Yeah. And you know, and then you would have those situations, like what you were saying about your brother, he would go in there, there'd be somebody in there now. They want to have a confrontation with him. And all he wanna do is just take care of his business and get out of there. Mm-hmm. So you had that. It was just like it was just like an oddity. Yeah. Well he he knew how to handle people. He was a nice guy, so they, they everybody everybody sort of liked him, respected him. But let's go back yeah. go back to what you were saying about the viruses. Yeah, so now as far as the viruses and uh the germs and the bacteria, they just existed everywhere. Because even the average bathroom user, whether it was male, sometimes they did not, you know, do what they were supposed to do correctly in the bathroom. Or female, sometimes they didn't do what was correct. Sometimes the female bathroom was worse with all types of bodily fluids. And and if a woman came in there with a baby or something like that, a lot of times diapers, things like that, were just thrown about and stuff. It was, I mean, it's New York, so it was really bad. Well, you know, you know, I was doing it. There's this thing in uh, South Africa that there, there was. I, I think I may have sent you the, a link. Um, the thing about Port Elizabeth, where the hospitals. I mean, you know, like stuff is just thrown about, you know, all kind of bodily waste. You know, people are just, it was, it's like terrible in South Africa now. In some parts, I should say, because it's, it's a huge country, you know. So, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I, got, I started really getting concerned. I, I, in fact, I talked to a cat this morning, you know, I posted up uh, into Belly Duna. A guy I know I trained, I actually, you know, I trained you all in radio, but I trained him in radio drama. He really incredible. He did he did some incredible, we did some incredible things in South Africa towards audio drama. It's like, whoa. I mean, you, you think we did some, well, actually we did, you know, true, true for you, you know, Creative Unity was the absolute best. That's true. But I, I, you know what I feel? I feel like you, like, like, like Prince of Revolution. You know, he never got over the revolution, you know. <laughs> Everything, he went to another band, but he would always be like, nah, but the revolution was it because that you know you know what i'm talking about anyway yeah. uh, but but that these guys were that they just do some amazing stuff anyway uh and, and he, he was he he ran down what was happening in the township and at least the township in cape town if everything is different like i said so it's like it's, it's a terrible situation but look i don't want to stay on this because it, it, because one of the things is like where do you get your information from and one of the things i guess i want to talk to you this week about unless you have another topic is uh, who's on your subscriber list? On your, on, on, like on your YouTube or your whatever, I, let's say YouTube, subscriber list, you know? And I was looking through my subscriber list and why do I have these people and how and how do I deal with them? Like, who's on your subscriber list? Who do you, uh, go, who's your go-to people all the time? Oh, okay, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> you gotta look it up, I can start mine first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not in any particular order. I got some stars from some of mine too, but uh, uh, it's almost like this sort of color because I've, I've been with, I've been rocking with, with Kaiser Report. You know, Stacey Herbert and Max Kaiser since 2014 at least. You know what I mean? And that those guys, they like years ahead. I mean, you listen to them as far as financial. And I started listening to uh, Max Kaiser, oh, not because of the financial stuff, because the boy reminded me, I don't want to say it like this, you could, but he, I have this thing about absurdities, you know? I laugh I laugh at absurdities. And to me, oh, so yeah, and like Max, Max was like, this boy is absurd, you know what I mean? But then I'd be listening and say, whoa, wait a second. He, whoa, he's... I'm trying to cut you off, but you mentioned him um, in one of your videos early on when I when I found you on um, YouTube mm -hmm. and I went to watch one of them like right after I watched your video and that's exactly what I thought of it. I was like, this guy's absurd but I like him though. But what's interesting, they, they, their rhythm is wonderful because she's a straight person and she gives you the data and the facts. And he, well, he gives you facts too, but he, in his own delivery. But then the second half, because it's only half hour program, but the second 15 minutes, he goes into, he, he talks to um, an expert, so-called expert in the field. And he used to be much more, so he used to be much, some of the experts he knows, he'd be messing with them. But lately he's been too, he'd been like real serious. Anyway, so Max, Max Kaiser, I advise everybody, just Kaiser report, you got to do that. I sent you Dr. Tracy McCarthy. She's she's a uh, she's an academic, you know. She's a researcher. Uh, so yeah. it's like, I think so psychologist, psychiatrist. Well, psychiatrist. I guess she got the degree or whatever have you. She's a researcher, but she's super serious. You know what I mean? I, I won't get into all that. Um, then of course uh, uh, we'll just skip. And then of course I do breaking brown and and, and and tone talks, but that's that's recent. That's for ADOS. We'll leave that alone. Then I do this. I do this guy. Uh, James C uh, 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 Corbett from the Corbett Report. He's out of uh, North um, uh, North Japan. He's like a Canadian that it lived, that that is married to a Japanese person. They they live some someplace in in Japan. But he the reason why I found him is because again he he like he like Max Kaiser is way ahead of his time uh, as far as what he's saying. But what attracted me to you see I used to pay attention in the early eighties I guess it was the mid eighties. So a thing called Covert Action Information Bulletin was a was a, a thing like ex CIA people, but on like the, the the you know the right side like like this guy Ray McGowan, he's people like that. Anyway, but what I liked about Covert Action Information Bulletin, they gave you their sources, they footnoted everything. Well, James Corbett does the same thing. You don't have to believe him, but he's there. Plus, if you look at it, here's when I trust somebody. When on their YouTube page or on their YouTube channel, they put Creative Commons. And they, that means they're paying attention. They don't do that YouTube standard. They do Creative Commons, which means something. One of the reasons people understand, one of the reasons why I don't get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, views, even subscribers, is because not only do I put Creative Commons, but I'm not monetized either. So there's no reason for them to send it to me, which makes me safe. You know what I mean? I, I don't need to talk to a lot of people. I need people to understand that I don't need to talk. I don't want, you know I me, mean? I don't, I don't, I don't seek no followers. Anyway, so he's very important to me. On a, on a lesser tip, like there's a, there's a woman called a Really Graceful. Um, uh, and sometimes I, I check her out, but sometimes she, you know, she's a little out there for me, but it's all right. But also Corbett, we'll call James Corbett, he, every think Friday they, they do a thing with this guy, James Evan Palato. He's, he's from the States. I think he's in New Mexico now. And uh, he's quite interesting, you know, he's like the, he's very good. But all, all these people so far are real broadcasters, not Breaking Brown, not, not so on, but they're real broadcasters. And you could tell a real broadcaster, somebody who knows the medium, you know? That's yeah. that's very important to me. You know, well, Trace McCarthy, she doesn't do the mic either. But you, know, you could tell somebody who knows the microphone technique, this everything, like that. Um, uh, Karen Hunter, I you know, she, she's a radio person, but... You know, so uh, uh, you know, I like her though. I like her, but at times, okay, I like. Let me leave it alone. You know, let me just let's leave it alone. But it's yeah. just sometimes, sometimes people try to be smarter than what they are. I say, say, sometimes they try to put put their bona fides out there, you know, and they yeah. try to over overcompensate. I mean, that's what happened to Nick. Nick Nick is not a broadcaster, and a lot of times he's conversating, and he was trying to. Almost, I'm going to say how much he knows, but there's a way if you're going to interview somebody, instead of you saying the stuff, you you have to say, you know, but you're supposed to bring, let them say it for you, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's this old thing, in, in, at least in journalism, it's like, you never, you never ask a question 
that you don't know, you don't know the answer to. <laughs> you know the answer. You just want them to say the answer. So anyway, so yeah. I want to stay on Nick. Anyway, so but, but Karen, you know, I like her when she's with. with, with I like her when she's with a uh, Dr. Greg Carr, who actually yeah. started the Nick thing. Uh, there's this guy, We All Be Radio, um, Brother Ron. He he, he has a. Uh, um, he has Judge Joe Brown on a lot, on a lot, but I like him when he's with Dr. Randy Short. Oh, those those guys, Randy Short. That's a character, man. Do you ever you ever check him out, Dr. Randy Short? You know who I'm talking about? I haven't checked him. Out. I gotta look him up. Yeah, look him up, Dr. Randy Short, man. <laughs> you 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 will you will not recover. <laughs> um, oh, let's talk about Judge Joe Brown. Uh, Valerie Denise Jones. Oh, she's an interesting. Um, she gets these people on there, and they just, they just, uh, you know, I'll I, I, I just throw that name out there. Valerie Denise Jones, check, check her out. Of course, uh, my weekly, I use, I use, I use Produce Justice or, or Dr. Neely Fuller. He says he's just doing his book all the time, but it's like some, it's like a preacher who has a Bible, and anytime he goes back to the Bible, he gives you another, he give you another thing, just stays on his thing with his, with his book, you know, uh, compensatory concept that he wrote. And he, of course, he's he's the one that, we, with, uh, along with Dr. Francis Cress Wessing, really, you know, pushed this whole thing about white supremacy and what it really is, and blah 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 blah. So, uh, but that's very important to me. Every every week, I gotta listen to. Uh, I gotta get. That's my preacher, you know. You know, Mr. Neil Fuller Jr. That I just got to, got to get him. In fact, I just did a post talking about if I could name two people that to have enough YouTube presence, enough. Um, what do you call that? Oh, uh, I actually saw that. I saw that with James Baldwin. Yeah, James Baldwin and and, and him and him. But James James is a monster. Look, that was crazy. That was crazy. Man. James is a monster. Um, and plus he he they they have so many little clips of well, so many uh, hour long things that he's because he in his little well he's done so much. And anything yeah. that people are saying right now, James has said it already. <laughs> Let me say this, because um, uh, uh, he spoke at uh, St. John Divine one time, and I was, you know, yeah. I, I, had to, I had to go, I had to ch check it out. And at the end, he had a little line, you know, I don't know if he was selling a book, something like that. So I actually shook his hand. You know, I shook a lot of people's hands in my lifetime, really significant wow. people. I mean, I shook Moshe Diane's hand, you know, never mind, I won't get into all this stuff. Anyway, um, I'm shaking hands with, uh, no, I'll keep on going. Um, oh, then of course, uh, you re recently just came on the air, really, I think they're about a year old, is a useful idiot. That's Max Taibbi and uh, uh, Katie Halper. You know, she's a comedian. Again, you know, the, I, I just like I just like Max. I mean, Max, uh, uh, Matt Taibbi. But you know Max Taibbi yeah. from Rolling Stone, so they, they're they they're pretty good. Um, is this called, is this called the, um, the other Taibbi guy? Say it again? Remember the other dude they used to be from, uh, I don't know what the word is, um, CBS? Mike Tyson, is that his fault? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know if they even spelled the same thing. I know Max TB, he, um, I keep saying Max, Matt Taibbi, he, he basically was in Russia for a while, so he knows a lot of global kind of things. He thinks a lot of the glo globally. I like people who yeah, think globally. Totally. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, there's two, there's two, two, two one comedian, you got to check out, this guy named a Andrew Schultz. Andrew, yeah. Andrew Schultz. That cat, he's funny. He's funny. Anyway, he's a white, white guy. Anyway, uh, see about comedians, Jimmy Dore. Okay, that's it. Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore. Oh, uh, I was checking out Jimmy Dore yesterday. Oh man, yeah. if you, if look, I, 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 all I got to say is, if you check out Jimmy Dore, you will not think of politics the same or or the Democratic Party the same anymore. I, he just on them, you know. Oh no. <laughs> Like, whoa! I saw something yesterday, man. I was like, what? Was like, white on rice, man. Like molasses on whatever. You know, that boy, he'd be... Anyway, but now it's real serious kind that you really should check out. In fact, I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to support him, not support him, but I'm going to get one of his T-shirts. It's a bow of the fifth column. Bow of the fifth column. He seemed like a redneck, but this boy... I'm telling you, I check him out all the time. I got, I got to check him out. Everything he posted, very, his stuff is already short, less than ten minutes usually, very short. Yeah. Um, but I really you know, like him. A lot of people, um, they tend to like click on bite-sized videos. If it's a long one, most people don't. They, they sort of like shy away from it. Yeah, well, 
That's that's why I make mine kind of long because I, I, here's the thing: I ramble a lot, but <laughs> just so people will not. I don't want people. I don't want to be popular. But the only one I'm serious about is, is my interview. Now you're part of the interview stream, you know. So yeah. I'm sort of weirdly serious like that because I actually listen at this particular one. But, but listen, there's a thing called Cold Fusion TV out of this guy out of Australia, you know. Oh yeah, I check out Cold Fusion. Yeah, they, they're on my list. Yeah, man, I, I like. I like him. Now for I, I gotta I gotta do it all the time, man. I can't help it, man. I'm a 5150, man. When I was in New York last year, I took Grayson. Down to yeah. um, down to uh, what's that? Caroline's to see Corey Holcomb. You know, yeah. oh man, I love me some Corey Holcomb. Fifty one fifty. I got that. That's like oh, my. Yeah. I, I didn't even know that he had a YouTube show because when I first looked him up, I didn't even know that he had a YouTube show. And I'm talking about like over a year ago. All I was seeing was like stuff that he did at like Shaq's comedy thing and some other stuff, and I was like, who is this dude? Then I found out that he was on Black Jesus on um yep. on uh Self Swim. Yep. And then I heard later that he had his own <coughs> excuse me, he had his own um YouTube channel. And I was like, Oh, okay. So I check out fifty one fifty and I, I used to watch I mean not watch, really listen to fifty one fifty like when I take a shower in the morning. Mm. So I was like, Yo, this will wake me up. <laughs> 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 and I was like, yeah, but from the time I go into the shower to the time I come out and get dressed, and by the time I even come downstairs and now fully dressed, it's like, yo, this is ridiculous. <laughs> And you know, sometimes he's re- lately he's been getting really serious. But you know, he, because he's got that crew with Zoe Williams, you know, because Zoe is happy. Because you know, the, I don't really check okay. out okay. Zoe's show, but you know, so, uh, the mansion, yeah, mansion, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other day, um, I was uh, <laughs> outside listening to Zoe with um Dr. Phil Valentine. That was pretty good. Yeah. So the audio got kind of cracked out a bit, but it was interesting though. But this last and, one, you know, this last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was messed up, but they 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 read they reposted it. I think it, they got it straight. Whatever, whatever the problem was. They, okay, I gotta check it out. Yeah, but, but I. Thing was, what he said in there after Doctor Phil had left mm. about um um the man that you talk about too, um, Christy Murphy, right? Uh, Christy Murphy, Christy Murphy. Yeah, and what he said when he was on his deathbed talking to his nephew. And he said, um, you know, where is your anchor? And then his nephew said, oh, and you. And then he said, Krista Murphy had, um, who was on his deathbed, had like de-aged or like regained his youth for 25 years just to lighten to his nephew. You know what I'm saying? And say, wait, my anchor is in, in your anchor is in me? He's like, then you didn't learn anything. <laughs> He's like, nothing. He's like, yeah, no. Your anchor's supposed to be in yourself. What are you talking about? You know, you just went off on them. That's that's why that's why I try to. I, it's hard for me to explain. That's why I'm I'm, I'm into what I my, the philosophy I call the the third infinity, which we're not going to go into right now. Um, uh-huh. So, but then then I have this guy hometown history. Talk about a- African history. There's a lot of people who do African oh, history. That's, that's one of the ones I was going to mention. Man, now now him maybe. Hometown. Yeah, man, maybe you can help me with this because I really want to support the brother, but I'm suspect I'm suspect of this page, uh, Patreon. How much do they take from him, whatever happened? Because I do want to support the brother, and I want to go to his Patreon, um, not necessarily get his stuff, but I just want to support him in another way. Because some people, I like, just buy their T-shirts, like you know, like like, uh, like like brother Ron. I just I just purchased a, um, he did, he's got a Ida B Wells T-shirt I ordered from him. You know, certain people I just get the T-shirt. You know. Now, like breaking brown, I do the t- you know ADOS, I get the T-shirt, that kind of thing. But uh, but for him, I really want to do his Patreon. So, uh, but tell me about Patreon. How does that work? Do you know? Or do I have to talk? Do I have to talk to Yusuf? What? Do, what I need to talk to Yusuf. I better put, contact that boy. Okay, contact him. But as far as I know, Patreon, um, it's almost like okay, YouTube is demonetizing everybody. So what they do is they go on Patreon, they bring their crew. I mean, all their followers and fans over the Patreon, and you know, for a dollar you can support them. You know, a dollar a month you can support what they do, right? And then um, they have other tiers after that. So it'll be like five dollars. You know, I'll give you access to this. Ten dollars will get even more intimate access. You know, and so on and so on. The higher the tier, the more access you get to 
to that individual. Okay, but here's the thing. I, I understand that. What I want to know is how much does Patreon take out? You understand? Itself. Uh, does so it take out 30%, 10%, 50%? I don't know. Not that I don't know. I, mean, I got to find out. I, I, I do have a Patreon yet. Well, I haven't even done a YouTube video. I'm just saying it too. <laughs> <laughs> of course, every once in a while, I have to check out a Joe Rogan clip. I don't really do. I mean, I do Joe Rogan sometimes, you know what I mean? But I, I don't, I'm not really subscribed to him. I got to say it that way. What I do is if, if, I, if it comes across my thing, it's interesting. Like the, like when he when he did Cornell West and Cornell West gave that story about, about, um, about, um, uh, um, um, oh man, um, uh, the sax player, you know, oh gosh, yeah. you know who I'm talking about? Not Bird, uh, what's the name? The other guy, uh, Coltrane. Okay, uh, okay. He, he, he did the thing talk about Coltrane, was blowing his horn, and he, he threw the horn down, and the drummer was saying, uh, Trey, what, what's happening? He says, the horn's in the way. The horn's in the way. He's trying to communicate with the people, and the horn was a, his horn. His main instrument was in the way. That's how much passion he had. But the way you have to see the way Cornell delivered that is like amazing. You know what I mean? Just amazing. That kind of, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm almost at the end. Oh, okay, I have to do this one. I, I, I've, no, I've I've followed her for a long while, but again, it's like because she's a real sister. You know what I mean? If you come up with a real sister, you just can't ignore them. Tasha K, unwind with Tasha K. Lord, you know, she she's doing gossip and stuff like that, but she you know she's also a radio, you can tell she's a radio trained person. I have to respect that. But anyway, I did that's I won't say it's a guilty pleasure, but it's like almost like a guilty pleasure. I don't really pay a lot of attention to her. Um oh, out of Africa. There's a lot of people out of there's some people out of Africa. One one young guy I really like is called Louis Spot. L-U-I-S-P-O-T. Louis Spot. He plays. Uh, he plays. He's on it. He plays a lot of um, uh, African leaders. Uh, that's you know, Pielo Lumumba. That, that, pe people like that. Anyway, and it's, it, he's not. A lot of time you have these African, and they they try to interpret for you, but he just gives it to you and say, "What do you think?" Blah blah blah. But I really like. He's a young guy. I want to start supporting him too. I don't know how to support him, but I have to support him. Uh, Is it Louis Hero Spotlight? Say again. Louis Hero Spotlight. No. No, it's no, it's it's, it's L U I S P O T. Okay, L U I S P O T. Yeah, Louis Spot. Okay. You 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 don't worry. You get him. He's a young guy. You 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 you'll see what I mean. Now for I have to tell. You, oh, let me also um, I check out. Not I'm not on subscribe, but I check out. You know what's crazy? I'm already subscribed to him. I just I guess I have so many subscriptions. He hasn't come up lately. Okay, I'm trying to weed off some of my people, whatever it is. But every again, I don't subscribe to them, but I run across them every once in a while, and I check them out, which is Real News Network, you know, yeah. out of out of Baltimore. I like them a lot, and that's where right. you get and you know, Aaron Maté gets on there a lot. And he has his own thing, but I I don't really check out Aaron Maté a lot because I don't know between Real News Network and 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 um, what's name Jimmy Dore Aaron pops up like that. One more comedian I just found. Did I find? Oh, also Dylan Radigan. He has this podcast with this guy, but they're heavy into the into the stock market. The, 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 I'm not really interested. I I only check out uh, uh, Dylan Radigan when when he gets when he's in with Jimmy Dore. But uh, there's this comedian I just found this young woman out of Mississippi. Her name is Rita Brent. She does these praying things, and she's hilarious. I love her a lot. But those are like you know. I, I again, I don't subscribe to it. now. Of course, for for <laughs> for entertainment purposes only, just to keep up with the hood. To Rick Nashi, <laughs> look. I'm, let me say, okay. I, I, I bought it. I, I, I bought his. I mean, I ordered his. I bought his. Um, um, you know, his hidden color series or whatever. Have you? It's nothing that we don't know. You know, if you know, we know that already. But it's just like Tariq, when he, be, especially on Instagram, he'd be playing somebody, and then somebody he playing the the, the, the guy's serious right there, but guy's cooner, but the guy's serious, and then he starts putting some music behind him, like some banjo move music, and it's hilarious. It's just for entertainment purposes. <laughs> <laughs> that's on Instagram but you know I don't I don't like this because it's, it's just against the code you know he's always talking about he's into the code and he's Ogun and all the rest of stuff that boy don't know what he's talking about you know um, so anyway I shouldn't say it that way but the point is I look at it's like it's just entertainment to me it's just it's totally entertainment to me so that's yeah. that's that's basically my, my, my list uh, there's other people but I don't want to 
talk about them. But who you got? I've listened to you now, man. I, I done talked enough. Go ahead. I listened to you, man. Okay. Let me go back to my list now. Okay. All right. So the home team that was on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually got NPR music. Sometimes I go with that. I check out um, uh, Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. What, 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 no. What does Chris Hogan do? Let me write this down. Yeah. He's a brother that talks about finances. But like, you know, from a very practical perspective. Oh, I must have I must have ran into him, but I didn't pay any attention. Go ahead. Yeah, former NFL player. Oh, um, I do I did I did, yeah. I I, I know. I I have I've seen him a couple of times. I just never uh clicked. Go ahead. What else? Right, voice walking. I got a lot of his stuff. Nah, man, I, um, I, I stopped with voice, man. I started with voice. That's how I found Yvette. You started with voice? <laughs> you don't like voice no more? No. Nah. Because Yvette, because I saw what was going on between them and developing, but I still, you know, listen to both of them. But um, with voice, you know, I don't take everything he says You know, you take a lot of stuff he says with a grain of salt, in a way. Not only with a grain of salt, but it's like, okay, I can't absorb all of this. Some of this is really not pertinent to what I really want to hear from him. You know, but when you start talking, you know, finances or certain things, I'm like, okay, that's what I really want to hear. Some of the stuff where you start talking about, like, the whole Nick Cannon thing, you know, so it'd be like, read Nick Cannon videos and stuff. It's like, ah, I don't really want to deal with all of that. No, I, no I, I didn't. Ju- I didn't. I dropped voice 